Here is water, so let's dive right into worship this morning. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Before our readings, we'll hear from our men's chorus.
First reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning to ga in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and the, with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness, witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and Jer Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all people, but to, who, to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and te to testify that he is the one or dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness, forgiveness of sin through his name. Please read responsibly the Psalms. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. How the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. When the Lord has done, it is more than 
This is the day that the Lord is, has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Second reading from 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of the people must be pitied. But in the fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death ha- came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all died in Adam, so all, we, all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes, to, comes the end. When he hands over the kingdom to the God of Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he it must reign until he has put all, the, all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the, the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to, him an, seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stopping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. Siblings in Christ, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I don't have any pictures for you this morning. It's kind of my custom on these festival days to allow you to picture Christ more than anything else. But I do have one picture in my head, and by the time I'm done, maybe you'll have a similar picture. See, I can still picture our old 1949 Chevrolet back on the farm, and the urgency with which my mother drove it up and down the country roads near our farm the day that my father died, back in 1963. We had no phone on the farm back then. And so, stricken with grief and determined to to spread the news, my mother grabbed me into the Chevy, took off down the country road to tell the neighbor, neighbors. It was a wild ride for a seven-year-old boy, with no seat belts, no less. The fact that our mother had no driver's license, having only had to drive to and from the fields before, well, that made it a little more wild. Might have even made my own heart stop. No, not really. But I will tell you that the Chevy itself died within a week of that fateful day after the one who bought it took it home from the sale. Too bad for him. There were no Chevys back in Bible times, and it was not a death, but a resurrection being announced on that first Easter morning. But I can still imagine that group of women, Mary Magdalene, James, Mother Mary, Joanna, and all the rest, tearing down the road from the tomb with only their feet to carry them, stumbling maybe over one another and bursting breathlessly into the room where Jesus' male followers still huddled in fear three days after Jesus had been crucified. 
I can frankly also imagine the, the, dis, the, the disbelief that greeted them. I mean, just as I can imagine the disbelief in the faces of our neighbors when our mother told them that her 58-year-old husband had just keeled over in the barn after bringing the cows in for milking. Such news was more common back then. There were no angiograms, no heart bicep passes to prevent or reverse the damage. Still, to die so young. I can almost hear people say, I just saw him yesterday. If it's hard enough to take in a death like that, it's even more hard to take in a resurrection. I mean, I mean no offense by this, but which of us would really have believed that babbling mass of womanhood screaming that, that they'd seen these two men in white and an empty tomb and telling them that their master had risen from the dead? Be honest now. Who of you would really have believed them if you were in the room with the disciples? And yet it wasn't just one woman standing there. They'd all seen the same thing. How could anyone not take them seriously? At least Peter seemed to do so. He took off down the door himself and ran to the graveyard to see. And then he went home, Luke says. Home? Not back to the others? Well, honestly, who would even have believed Peter? I mean, you remember that Peter was the one who had castigated Jesus for claiming that he was going to be crucified and rise again. And then he denied even knowing Jesus, sitting outside the courtroom where Jesus was being uh, tried for whatever crimes the officials could throw at him. Who would believe a cowardly liar like Peter. When it comes right down to it, who would believe you or me? I mean, who rises from the dead these days? Granted, people are sometimes revived. Some of you may have been through that yourself. There have also been instances, so rare these days, of people who were thought to be dead suddenly waking up, even in the morgue, scaring the daylights out of the, the uh, staff there and grabbing headlines in the process. But once these folks are seen walking around, well, there's no denying the truth of what had happened. The resurrection, however, seems to be to some simply wishful thinking. As Luke put it, an idle tale made up to comfort the soul, maybe, or more cynically, to further a religion. And yet there were all those witnesses, Peter and Mary's and, and, and all the rest. And then, much like those women, and my mother in the 49 Chevy, those witnesses took off down the roads and spread the good news far and wide that the one who was dead was now alive and that by this miraculous act, all that Jesus had said and done had been verified. See, it's not just that the dead in Christ will rise again, but that those who live in Christ no longer need fear death or any form of suffering or disgrace that may come from following him. You know, I think one reason that some people have a hard time believing in a risen Christ is that far too many Christians find it hard to believe, or at least find it hard to act on that belief. If they're anything like me, they'd be more likely to believe that their lives or at least their reputations might be harmed by speaking or living the way Jesus spoke and lived. There's a saying among some pastors, quite frankly, that if you really want to follow Christ, you better look good on wood. Well, sometimes that's true. Take the ancient saints or martyrs, or even someone like Martin Luther King. And yet people did, and still do, follow Jesus. And people are also disgraced, lose their jobs, their livelihoods, even their lives in doing so. And to them, Jesus says, I've got you. One way or another, he has the backs of those who dare to stand up for those for whom Jesus stood up. All those people who live outside the circles of respectable society, you know the ones, might be different today than they were back then, but they're not hard to recognize when they see them, when we see them. Who would believe that anyone would care enough to die for one of those people? For that matter, who would believe anyone would die for you or me? The Apostle Paul wrote, Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
That's good news. But the even better news is that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, proving the truth and power of that love, and demonstrating to his followers, you and me too, that we need neither fear living like Jesus nor dying like him. For if we die, then we too will rise like him. We're set free by Jesus' death and resurrection to live our lives fully as God would have us do from the beginning, loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves. We're set free, too, from those who would try to convince us that we need the latest, the greatest, the most expensive tools and toys money can buy. That it is possible to buy acceptance, status, or even love when we buy their product or service. Because, in fact, we have all the love and acceptance and status we need directly from God because of Jesus. That, too, is good news. It's also good news that those who are abused, addicted, disabled, or depressed are released from the chains that bind them by a God who loves them and considers them of an infinite value. Yes, you. I recognize all this can be hard to believe because of the many voices that try to tell us otherwise in order to keep us down and enslaved, to sell us something we do not need, or to hang on to the power and control that they themselves desire. Indeed, there's a lot of folks all around the world who still do not believe the good news that we celebrate this day. It seems so contrary to common sense. And the truth is, the truth that it proclaims so upsetting to people of power and status that to even think of fully living out this good news can stop people's hearts cold. Yet imagine if it's true. If the resurrection is really true, if it's true that even though we die, we will live again, Therefore, we need not fear death, but instead accept it both as an inevitable an, an, an end of death, as life, that is, and a gateway to eternal life with Jesus. Imagine that's true. Imagine, too, if living our lives as Jesus lived without fear would really be possible for all of us, for each of us, with the Holy Spirit's help. All because Jesus died and rose again. What if that's all true? And what if... Everyone in the world really believed that. What kind of a world would we have? Well, the book of Revelation and the prophets, like the prophet Micah, give us glimpses into that kind of a world. Revelation says, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And Micah writes, God shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Wow, is that all true? If that could really happen from believing in the resurrection and following Jesus? I think I just might be inclined to pull that old 49 Chevy out of the woods, if I still had it, and, really, and go for a really wild ride. And if my heart should stop in the process, well, Mom and Dad, it'd be good to see you again. The thing is, it is true. Jesus Christ did rise from the dead. That crowd of women, all the witnesses who came after them, proclaim it to be true. And you are free to live like Jesus. And we will see all our departed loved ones in heaven someday. And Jesus, too, with or without a 49 Chevy. Amen. Please rise and sing. Got that picture in your head now?
The Apostles' Creed that we say actually started out as a creed that the adult baptismal candidates would proclaim as they came to the font. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants and provide farmers with plentiful harvest. Merciful God. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain those who support vulnerable people across the world, especially refugees and migrants, those without homes or suitable work. Empower governments, churches, and other agencies to come to their aid. Merciful God. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way especially those who have lost loved ones due to war, violence, or natural disasters. Bring healing and hope to those we know who are ill or grieving, especially Ron and Valerie, Barry and Sharon, Marvin and Doug, Ann and Wanda, Marilyn and Tim, Larry and Lucy, Terry and Bob, Jacob and Adeline, Pauline and Vern, Sue and Iona, Betty and Lynn, Shirley and Jason, Jake and all those in our hearts. Merciful God. Proclaiming God, we offer prayer to those who are engaged in mission and ministry. Especially we pray for Zachary, for Nicholas, and the Haiti School of Hope. Merciful God. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give us, this community of faith, a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Merciful God, we offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please greet one another with that peace. I want to highlight a few announcements for you. You can read most of them in the bulletin, but I want to highlight the, the uh, Feeding South Dakota distribution, food distribution here on, on Tuesday over at the Ag Building. Um, eighth grade confirmation class, only the eighth grade will meet to kind of formulate their faith statements on Wednesday evening, and the community youth group will go bowling. That should be fun. Next Sunday, 
um, is after worship will be a congregational meeting to vote on updating our constitution to bring it in line uh, with the, uh, the model constitution that the ELCA has for all congregations. So hope you can turn out for that. Our special offering also next Sunday will uh, go into our campership offering for those going to camp. You know, we have three eighth graders this year eligible for that and uh, others. We'd like to build it up so anybody who would want to go to camp could get a scholarship. So be generous uh, and think about that. Upcoming then, you see lots of things going on in the next few weeks. So uh, keep your eyes and ears tuned. Anything that's not here that I need to lift up for your information. God has blessed us through a resurrection and through all the gifts that we give, e receive every day. We give thanks to him with our tithes and our offerings. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all to your table. Reach us to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. 
Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and delight, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses to the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy and merciful and mighty Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached up to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, who on the cross opened his arms to all, and on this day was raised from the dead. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Things of God for the people of God. Be you may be seated and come forward as the ushers direct you and come receive the wafers from me and then go to the side uh, stands where you can pick up your uh, wine or grape juice. Grape juice is in the middle. We also have uh, gluten-free wafers if you desire.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
Go in peace. Tell what God has done.